former U.S. presidential spiritual advisor sentenced to six years in prison. Okay, in the United States of America, the former Houston megachurch pastor, Kirby John Codwell. Now that is a name for you. Kirby John Codwell. Cladwell. No, Cladwell was once a spiritual advisor to Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. The pastor was a frequent visitor to the White House during the George W. Bush administration and even officiated Jenna Bush's wedding. In Louisiana, authorities sentenced Codwell to uh, six years in federal prison for defrauding more than two dozen people out of millions of dollars by selling them worthless Chinese bonds. According to a statement from the U.S. Attorney's Office in Louisiana, uh, Caldwell said, and, no, and Louisiana financial advisor Gregory Allen Smith were indicted in uh, 2018 by federal office officials after encouraging 29 people to invest about $3.5 million uh, between April 2013 and August 2014 in historical bonds issued by China before the communist takeover in 1949. They told investors that they could see returns as high as 15 times their initial investment. Sadly, the bonds from the former Republic of China existed only before the communist takeover there in 1949. Now the bonds are considered to be no more than collectible memorabilia by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Ah, so Alex is raising the important question of what is the spiritual advisor to the president, no less? Alex, this is an um, excellent no, question. No, 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 no. Look at the number of questions. That's, you didn't read it right. Alex is not asking, what is the spiritual advisor? The number of question marks makes me believe that Alex is asking, what is a spiritual advisor? That's how it's, he's shocked. He's like, what the hell? So you have to read it right. I want to point out that not only did this supposedly religious person who, you know, is guided by a higher morality, um, <laughs> commit this fraud and defraud these people but he was aided and abetted by a former louisiana financial advisor so the two of them are in cahoots together to defraud people it's really it's sad and it's very um Again, the same situation we see all the time, this undue respect or trust afforded into a religious person. And therefore, you know, people would maybe not do the kind of due diligence they would normally do in a situation such as this. These two are working together. He's a religious person, particularly with these credentials to the White House. Oh, he must be telling me the truth. He would never. You know, he, you know, is in bow, endued with this trust and authority that is obviously unwarranted. Um, you were actually, Susanna, we're going to say, what's a spiritual advisor? I interrupted you and you never actually clarified. Oh, Lord only knows. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I always... The fact that, like, this is a secular government and like this is something that the executive branch yeah. is why is should they have it? them yeah i mean in yeah. their personal life fine they can do what they want you know personal advisor versus no presidential advisor which gives a veneer of you know the state and the responsibilities of, you know associated with that to this religious person um yeah, but isn't that against the separation of church and state for it? Like, is this guy being paid by the taxpayer to advise the president on spiritual matters? Like the way I imagine it is like the kings that have like a grand wizard in like fairy tales and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I think a spiritual advisor is supposed to be. But like, isn't that like, shouldn't that be illegal in the United States to ha for the president to have a spiritual advisor? I don't think this person's being paid as a cabinet member or anything like that. I think what 
they're getting paid with is the recognition that they can then transfer into other books in terms of getting Doesn't paid really by matter someone what they're getting... else to listen that... to them or to go to their church because they're associated with a president. Doesn't doesn't matter what they're being paid as they like if they're a cabinet member they're being paid by the taxpayer no i don't think they're a cabinet member there's no, i don't think there's doesn't, a it doesn't member have they don't have cabin. to i'm sorry but they don't have to be a cabinet member to get paid as for, with the i taxpayer. understand that but i right. i i do not they're, think they are a formal part of the government but i could be wrong on that I mean, their, their title is U.S. President. I mean, even if they're getting paid by influence and higher status, as there's a monetary value to that. I don't know. But the, I mean, the fact that the president is spending any of his time being advised on spiritual stuff, that is his time is taxpayer resources, even, right? If, if he's spending, here's the thing. I think it should be illegal, even if the president of the United States does as little as spend half a second re opening the Bible, half of reading half a verse while he's on the like at the time that he's supposed to be serving while, the while so let he's me presidenting. <laughs> yeah, while he's president. Yeah, while he's presidenting. Actually, that's good. That's right. Yeah, I'm gonna go out. That. That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> while he's presidenting. Well, he's, that should be legal. You're like, you read your goddamn Bible when you're on your free time. So if that time is even being wasted on like an advisor, like, well, God, blah 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 blah. This should be like, yeah, this is un un unconstitutional. He, this is like this is against the law like if it was i know this is like never going to happen but in a fair world this this is what secularism means to me you get to be religious on your free goddamn time not on taxpayer money but anyways um some interesting notes about this case wait shoot where did it go so um, the United Methodist Church has since defrocked the fallen pastor, though he continues to serve in a paid position at Windsor, where his wife now serves as lead pastor. Uh, Caldwell has, was credited by the church, who noted that he voluntarily paid restitution to his victims before being sentenced, which the church said was virtually unheard of and extremely rare in these kinds of cases. So for just for... Um, clarity um he has denied the accusations but he pled guilty last year and he was in prison after pleading guilty now he's been formally sentenced to the six years um so blah, 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 blah. then there are other um uh people involved with his methodist group oh bishop who is going to bat for him Head of the Southeast Texas United Methodist Group, Bishop Scott Jones, noted that Caldwell, quote, confessed his crimes and offered a sincere expression of remorse for his actions and the harm they caused, as well as taking extraordinary steps towards repairing the damage. Um, Jones further mentioned the court heard about these efforts and made additional factors, including the significant uh, accomplishments over decades as a pastor and community leader when determining Mr. Caldwell's appropriate punishment for the confessed crimes. So here they're trying to. Um, yeah, so here's more status. of what Armin was saying. Like, so just because he did something good before as a pastor doesn't negate these crimes. In actuality, in my opinion, He's trading in this uh, ideology that being religious and being a pastor allows him to be in a position to advise people on a spiritual nature and should ostensibly follow the Ten Commandments if he's a Methodist and all these other things. So in my opinion, that actually makes his crime even more egregious because not just is he a criminal, but he's a hypocrite. Wait, Armin, can you... Um, there's a video that I actually want to play, like even just a few seconds of that's embedded in this article. Is Are you sharing audio? Yes. Okay. There's no music, so, right? Hello, church family. I'm Floyd hey, LeBlanc you, from. Pause and then um, full screen this real quick because I want to be people to see the full title. Um, oh, wait. I need to do this, then do this. Hold on. 
personnel committee here at Windsor. Why is it not letting me? It's not letting me. Okay, okay. well, the full title of this video is just um, called It's Not Over Till it's Over, The Kingdom Building. Wait, where, why is it not showing well, I could just, the full title? I could just click on a video The here. Kingdom Building Continues. So this is uh, oh. very interesting. So just uh, play this really quick because they're trying to excuse this man. I'm Floyd LeBlanc from the Personnel Committee here at Windsor Village. Earlier today, the sentencing hearing was held in the Kirby John Caldwell court case in Shreveport, Louisiana. I'd like to share a few important points about the case. First, I believe Kirby John Caldwell was also a victim in this case. His victimization started when he chose the wrong business partners. He acknowledges this fact and he has accepted full responsibility. This business deal involving investment in Chinese heritage bonds resulted in financial harm to a group of investors, victims in the legal case. Mr. Caldwell has apologized and asked forgiveness from the people harmed in this matter. Those include the victims in the Shreveport legal case, his family and the Windsor Village Church family, where he served as senior pastor for 38 years. Over the past 34 months, as this case has been pending, lay preacher Caldwell has remained very active with our church family, including during the pandemic, as we have engaged in virtual ministry and new initiatives, such as a food distribution partnership with the Houston Food Bank, delivering food weekly to families in Southwest Houston. Back to the bad business deal. Kirby John Caldwell and his wife were the first investors in the Chinese bonds and thus the first victims. As a person seeking to operate in integrity, Wait, like Mr. Caldwell I like how you're just ha ha reacting to people in the comments of this video. <laughs> you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay um no, it, 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 it's just like my my mistake was trusting the wrong person come on i was just thinking that exact thing right wait that sounds like yasmin muhammad's apology that's why we were saying that i, I see, oh, I, see yeah. you're, I see you're picking up what i'm throwing down <laughs> okay, okay 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 and also subscribe to our newsletter because if we get removed from all these uh, platforms at least we could reach out to you and guys by the way if you subscribe to our newsletter you get a free copy uh, why there's not, where's your copy, Susanna? Get it, get it, get it. We're doing promotion. You get a free, it's not even promotion, it's free. Okay, so if you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description, you get a free copy of Why There's No God. Ah, come on, like I'm handing it out for free. Okay, it's a bestseller on Amazon and you get it for free. So subscribe to our newsletter and you get a free copy of Why There's No God sent to you. Link in the description.